Good morning, everyone, and welcome to ICT Tape Reading Practice number four. It is Friday, June 23rd, 2023. Um, if you were one of the lucky few people who watched my ICT Tape Reading Practice number three, uh, which was last night, you could have been in on this trade with me. Um, yeah, I got in on uh, NASDAQ short at the right time is obviously during London. Um, okay, so the analysis from uh, from last night when I made ICT tape reading practice has not changed a whole lot. I uh, still think that the NASDAQ is going to come and draw down and take out 964 evens. Let's take a look at ES. So ES just took out Thursday's uh, London PM low and that came in at uh, 4,393 even. We're now drawing down lower. We have a long wick inefficiency that's sitting here uh, at 383 halves. And we also have another long wick inefficiency that's sitting here at uh, 381 three quarters. So that's sitting, uh, those two objectives are sitting lower. Now we also have a fair value gap uh, here that is sitting below price. And we also have another fair value gap that is sitting here below price. So price is going to be attracted to these two uh, fair value gaps that are sitting below price and the long wick inefficiency. So I do see lower uh, on the ES today on Friday. Um, I am seeing uh, lower trading. I don't know if we get to the second uh, fair value gap, but I think it's possible. Uh, if we get in between these two fair, fair value gaps, we're looking at 43.75, and that's 43.75. So I do think that we're drawing lower on the uh, ES daily time frame. We have this fair value gap, and you can see the um, boxes that I drew. Let's take a look at um, Euro futures. And let's go down an hourly chart. Your futures uh, came down to this order block, and I'm just going to highlight that. Uh, found some support. We're now trading back up into this uh, impulse down candle. Let's take a look at uh, the 50% of that candle. So let's go have a look at the daily. The daily uh, euro futures. I don't see really any efficiency that uh, at this point we're drawing lower to. Um, take a look at the daily. At the daily time frame, we're looking. We're currently trading in a fair value gap, and we are trading below it. So this makes me pretty bearish on the euro futures for a good while to come because I think we're going to trade down and do this. So that's my basic premise on what I think Euro futures are going to do uh, on the daily time frame is we're going to trade through this fair value gap, come back up to it, invert, and then cart start coming lower. Um, weekly time frame, not seeing any inefficiency, so we need to look for liquidity. Um, if no inefficiency, then look for liquidity. So we do have, let's take a look at the hourly Euro futures. We are looking at a prominent low here that was formed on the Thursday, 15th of June. And that was formed uh, during the London PM session. Um, Yeah, so London PM session formed on Thursday, 15th June. We formed a low sitting at one spot, uh, 08665. And looking at our daily time frame, that would be about the consequent encroachment uh, of this of this uh, fifth, fifth, Thursday, 15th June's candle, which that would make that would be a reasonable target. Uh, we also have an order block sitting lower, so I'm looking for liquidity targets here on the Euro futures. Um, I'm looking for lower prices, so 
bear some of the euro futures. Um, let's take a look at what uh, a couple other big movers today. Um, take a look at copper. Take a look at copper on the daily chart. So copper is being drawn to this daily fair value gap. So I'm going to highlight this. So we traded up into a liquidity target on the daily time frame. So you can see that we uh, we took out the high from the 8th of May, which appears to be the objective of price's last swing. Now we're coming back down to a fair value gap and an order block here. And so uh, I do see us going lower today on, um, on copper. And I think that we're going to trade down to the 75% of this order block. So I'm looking at three spots, seven, seven, nine, oh. And then uh, from that point, do we have any inefficiencies? Yeah, we do. So um, copper, I'm looking for lower. And I'm looking for this fair value gap right here. Uh, so kind of what I foresee copper doing now is coming in, trading into this order block, and then like this. So that's what I'm kind of foreseeing on copper. Hourly time frame. We do have a low. Our low uh, comes in here from Monday, 12th of June during the London session, London AM session. So our first draw on liquidity in terms of our copper futures. Draw on liquidity. is going to be here. Right there, three spot 7350 equal lows here. So we also have a Thursday, 8th of June's London PM session low comes in at three spot 7345 and then Monday, 12th of June's London AM session comes in at three spot, 735. So we take a box here. It's going to be a lot of liquidity on copper right where my top box is drawn here. So going to be a lot of liquidity here below this um, three spot 735. Now, I don't know if we get there on Friday, uh, which is today, but I know that price is drawing to it. I personally think so. This yellow box here is our daily fair value gap. And I think that we are looking at uh, trading down into it, finding some support, and then trading back up, maybe trading it as an inverted fair value gap. And then we go target liquidity. So that is what I'm looking for on copper at this time. We also have, by the way, this is an order block sitting higher. So if I were getting uh, looking at shorts on copper, uh, I would look at three spot eight, two, nine, five, be 50 percent of this order block. We also have a uh, fair value gap that just formed higher. So you can see that price traded into the 25 percent of this uh, fair value gap right here. Okay, so right here at a fair value gap form, we traded into the 25% of that and we institutional order flow entry drilled lower. We also have a tiny little fair value gap here where my uh, box is drawn. Last thing I want to look at is um, the dollar index. So let's start with the dollar index on a weekly time frame and then work down. So dollar index on the one week time frame. Dollar index came down and worked into this inefficient area right here. So where there's only a body of a candle, this is sell side inefficient. So the dollar index on the weekly time frame, we had a, an impulse candle down last week on the 12th of June, 
and we trade it into this area of inefficiency. And now we see that the dollar index is moving higher. On the weekly time frame, it's very, very difficult for me to say whether the dollar index wants to continue to move higher and go find a liquidity target or whether it wants to come back down lower. We do have a fair value gap sitting on the dollar index down here. So it's possible that the dollar index wants to turn back around next week and come back down. But because we're sitting in the middle of this range, uh, it's very difficult for me to say. Monthly time frame. We also have this uh, one month. Um, so you can see this one month volume imbalance sitting up here and price might be drawn to that. But we also have a fair value gap here sitting below on the monthly time frame. So I don't really have a long-term bias right now on in terms of the dollar index. Um, I would say a slightly lean higher. Daily time frame, dollar index. Came down into this daily fair value gap right here. Found, uh, found support is now moving back higher. So we came down to an inefficiency. Now I think we would look for liquidity. Uh, in terms of Friday's trading, my most immediate thoughts would be maybe if we have a big day on uh, the dollar index, it's possible we see 103 spot 756. That's uh, Monday's high. I think that is in the cards. If we have a large day, I think that um, 103 spot 756 is in the cards. Traded down into this fair value gap, found support. We then, uh, where we're trading at right now, take a look. We uh, we found this volume imbalance here, and price uh, price is currently respecting that on the daily time frame. Let's go down to an hourly. Dollar index is coming back. Um, found an inefficiency order block sitting above. So we're probably looking for a liquidity target. And I'm going to say our first liquidity target, if we come down lower is 102 spot 651. But, uh, I think what the dollar index wants to do, we have a fair value gap that we are currently trading in. And what I want to do is I want to watch to see if the dollar index comes down to this 102 spot 770, the current fair value gap that we're in to see if we uh, do something like this. Okay. Interested to see if we do this on the dollar index, just like this. So my draw on liquidity for the dollar index is Basically, um, take a look right here, buy side liquidity and right here, buy side liquidity. So, um, I do lean, I think the draw on liquidity on the dollar index is yet higher. Um, I think it's possible we make it to one Oh three spot three, seven, five on Friday. Uh, depending on whether we want to treat this current hourly fair value gap that we're trading in and invert it. Uh, so we, we tr well, it's not inverted. It's just a normal fair value gap if we trade down into it and then uh, bounce up. So um, last thing I want to talk about, 30-year bonds. Um, in my ICT tape reading practice number two, I told you that I was looking for higher on uh, bonds. And I did take that trade. Didn't obviously take the, uh, I did not take the full move of this trade, but I took a good chunk of it. I got 15 ticks on a 30 year bond on my top step account. And so I am uh, happy with that. I'm happy with my 15 ticks on the 30 year bond. We obviously ended up uh, last night, I mentioned to you that we might come up into this area of inefficient trading and we might take it out. And uh, sure enough, we did. Um, 
So that, that high came in at 128 spot 10 on the 30 year bond. I was just looking for Thursday's AM high and that came in at 127 spot 28, but I actually got out 10 ticks early. So I made 15 ticks. Um, I was just got a little bit scared, honestly. Uh, but that's okay. We, we traded on Thursday's AM session. Uh, up, so, so this, this basically was our liquidity target right here. Now it is possible. Let's go to 30 year bonds on the daily time frame. If the bonds really want to go crazy today, we could be looking at another draw on liquidity um, up to 129 spot 16, which came in on the Thursday, uh, the 1st of June. So it is it is possible that 30 year bonds are going to have um, a huge day today. I'm not uh, I'm not saying it's impossible. So I'm still looking for potentially higher on the 30 year bonds. Hourly time frame, we have another buy side liquidity draw on the 30 year bond. So overall, um, I would say that I'm still looking for higher on the 30 year bond. OK, so we covered uh, we covered Nasdaq. We what else did we cover uh, last night? I covered crude oil. We covered copper. Um, we covered the dollar index and we covered the 30 year bonds. I think that's all that I want to cover right now. This has been ICT tape reading practice number four.